Uh, I'm the Red Hat software engineer. Um, I'm, I will talking about lin Linux on Razorfy, and re uh, especially for uh, Fedora and firmware status update. I have a long list uh, session for several times since uh, two years ago. So uh, we I can see all kind of uh, different update and uh, good. Uh, good, uh, good things happen on Fedora on, on Razorfy. So I would like to share with you guys the, all the uh, process, good process in this area. Okay. So uh, I, I going, I going to talking about these things for uh, two different sessions. One is Fedora on Razorfy. Another is phone, uh, firmware on Razorfy. At, at, the, at the last one, at the last session, just FYI, so I will provide all the necessary information that you can practice all the uh, work in this session. So you can practice on your own computer. So first of all, Fedora on Razorfy. And you may, uh, as you may know, for Red Hat, we have three different uh, OS OS, one is Fedora, another is Rail, which is a commercial, uh, pr commercial product. The last one is a, also a so open source uh, free OS called CentOS. So um, the first one, Fedora, is a new, it, it focuses on the new feature and new technology. It's free, uh, it includes all the cutting edge uh, feature and technology, and the release cycle is much shorter, just uh, twice, uh, twice a year, two new uh, per year. But for real, every, every time we, every time, uh, we will uh, use, take one of the Fedora version, just take it out, and then start to testing and uh, uh, validate all the feature and make sure everything's stable and then become a next next real version real version so the the release cycle mo may be more slower just nine months and but it's come with the support of uh, red hat red hat uh, we call it uh, subscription so fedora is a pioneer on new technology he uh, so if you, we want to put a new architecture on, on real, we have to do everything on Fedora first. So that's uh, why we are doing Fedora on Razorfly first. So every Fedora, new Fedora version comes from the previous one. Um, but for the Razorfly, we don't have previous one, so that's kind of a chicken egg situation. For breaking out this situation, we have to use cross compiler uh, do the something we call it bootstrap. So what is bootstrap? Bootstrap is using cross compile tool and the source code. It comes from SRPN, do the cross compilation and make the bootable basic rule FS uh, with the native build, uh, native tool like GCC. But it's not enough. We also need RPM build, uh, which help you to build the RPM package. Then, if you if you build a package always in the same uh, root FS, it kind of a little bit dirty. So we also want to use mock, which create a new root FS for you to uh, build a build a package. So it could be a very clean environment to build a new package. So once we have all these things, we can make it as a core builder. It can be used, can be a, a module, can be, a, can be used in the Koji. So what is Koji? Koji build system, it make all the RPM package for Fedora project. So uh, you can see in the, okay. Oh, it doesn't work. okay. You can see in the middle of, the, of this uh, diagram, you can see the, the uh, read box, box. Uh, it's a Koji system. It helps you to dispatch all the package you want to build to different builder, and every builder is a native build uh, system. So in in the Fedora Fedora Razorfy Koji system, we have three HiFi Unleash, which 
thanks to uh, thanks to SciFi to donate these three ball to us. So one of them has connected with SSD, so, and we also have what, more than 100 QMU uh, virtual machine, which has been deployed in x86 server, um, can help us to build a package. So it, in the middle of this uh, box, you can see uh, there's a main server for for the Koji system is a x86 code, uh, server, which helps you to um, maintain all the all the things like uh, uh, like repo control, database, and the interface with with the Koji. So that's a Koji system. We have made have we have one Koji system in in uh, Fremont and very nearby here, very near to here. And we are also trying to build one in China, which can more more easier to help a local chip chip vendor to uh, to support their new chip, and which we gonna to upgrade uh, to upstream all the new feature or patch to this uh, to US uh, Koji system. So in this Koji system, we we are building Fedora 20, uh, 32. And including the debug info, all the packages, including debug info, debug source, and uh, source package, all the package. And once we have these all the package, we can build an imaging, Fedora imaging. So we have three different kinds of imaging: uh, Fedora, de de Fedora developer imaging, a minimum, and general imaging. But uh, normally, we because of the resource limited, so we only build Fedora. Uh, developer imaging frequently. And once we have this uh, package imaging, we also need a repo to uh, up upgrade your system. Once you want to use uh, Young install or DNF install, you need a repo, right? So we have one main repo in Fedora project, and then another mirror in Princeton University we also have a mirror in China, which uh, get a help from from the uh, from from uh, IS, uh, ISCAS this uh, organization. So we have for now we have three different repo in the world. So Fedora Imaging for now have uh, been sub already support uh, Liver and QMU, and you can just download it and. Pr Deploy into a SD card or put into your system, and just easily, just uh, can do out of box things. Just you can just run it up, run it up, and it also support real hardware, uh, Sci-Fi Unleash. So um, right now it can running on Hi-Fi Unleash with expansion ball, which you can see the uh, desktop running on it. So um, I, I can see different workshop they showing this uh, demo, this Fedora running on it and they, with, with the uh, desktop. So we also test Fedora imaging on Andy's, uh, Andy's system and another system in uh, produced by uh, ICT, they call it uh, Swar. And this system, uh, just like a cloud com uh, FPGA cloud deploying, Deployment platform, uh, which let student and developer very easy to to build and to build their own chip uh, in this system, and we have run Fedora on it. So let's uh, let's a picture I've run uh, Fedora Geno imaging on Sci-Fi Unleash in my home, and let the the snapshot you can see here is is made inside the system, not the not the picture, not the camera, it's just inside the system, we take a snapshot. And this is the picture which uh, I mentioned it, produced by ICT. They have a, a cloud system to help developer to uh, deploy, recertify, uh, develop, uh, recertify implementation, and then you can run Fedora on it. So uh, we already test uh, uh, these four different systems. So, uh, why people like to use Resify? Because it means rich hardware ecosystem and rich software ecosystem. 
So Fedora always open. We want to deploy our system into all kind of a different uh, RISC-V 64B and maybe 32B chip. So if once you have a chip, once you, if you are the chip window, uh, you want to produce a chip with MNU or want to run Linux, please contact with us. We really want to help to, to make Fedora running on it. So let's a summary. Three years ago, one of the uh, Red Hat engineer, Richard Jones, start working on that, and then two other, uh, two other developer joined that after one or two years because we tried to, we have to wait all the patch be merged. Uh, in Red Hat, we have upstream first uh, principle, to, uh, so we have to wait all the patch be merged, and then we can do the final bootstrap, the third bootstrap, uh, one year, uh, two years ago. So actually. Fedora on RISC-V already two years old. So um, it's, it's very, so people may not know this news, but actually it's a long, already running on RISC-V for a long time. Then we built Koji system, we make Genoa running on it. Um, so the, the biggest, my, I, I can see biggest point is uh, this year, June, uh, June Red Hat joined the RISC-V Foundation. Uh, as even IBM already is a founding member of the foundation. We still want to join in. We still want to help RISC-V uh, software ecosystem uh, from software side. You know, yeah, we are the, we are the open source software company. So uh, this is all the history of Fedora on RISC-V. Right now, uh, we are we can running on real hardware and this and this and the ICT platform. So let's all about the Fedora on RISC-V, and let's uh, give give you give you a sound summary about firmware on RISC-V. So let's uh, let's uh, firmware uh, we are running a uh, long time ago, right? Uh, we use BBL to boot VN Linux, and then the initial FS, and then uh, Fedora. Uh, root FS, but it's very inconvenient, uh, and the BBL is a very simple bloater, which uh, not really good to use. So uh, then, thanks to the U-boot and open SBI development, uh, right now, the U upstream U-boot can boot Fedora imaging, and it's all work very well. And, and then, before the U-boot, we need another firmware to boot U-boot, right? So we we already may open SBI, U-boot, and Linux kernel uh, as a standard boot flow for Fedora for on RISC-V. Right now, actually, we are working on Linux to make sure we can have a F, a EFI stamped kernel, and then we can use Grub to boot the Linux kernel. So once we, we finish all kind of uh, uh, software, we can see a very uh, standard boot float for all kind of uh, uh, OS, not just for Fedora. So the column, for the current boot float for Fedora and RISC-V, you can see we put the open SBI running up first, and then it boot U-boot and, and uh, boot Linux kernel in the boot partition, just like a normal system. And for the sci-fi, Unleash, we, we have a two, deep, two uh, firmware running in bef before the open SBI, which you also can do some modification. And so that's very similar with the QMU bootflow. But the only difference between them, I think, is the DTB. Uh, DTB in the QMU is, is generated by itself, so we don't need to worry about that. But for the uh, Sci-Fi Unleash, we need to get the DTP first from Linux kernel, but you just need to use the upstream kernel, uh, the DTP inside the upstream kernel. So if you want to try to, you know, deploy all the things like this, and you can you can uh, build all the firmware, uh, have have the very simple simple uh, step. One is um, build a U-boot and then build a uh, open SBI wrap the U-boot bin, bin, become a firmware payload bin, and you can just uh, boot it up, use this BIOS. And for the real hardware, you, you just need to build a DTB before the U-boot dot bin. So that's a very simple way to uh, practice 
And the good, good news of uh, RISC-5 firmware is actually we can run UEFI on RISC-5 QMU and the real hardware. Last year, HPE engineer already made uh, UE EDK2 running on Sci-Fi Unleash, the Sci-Fi uh, Freedom U500, this kind of a FPGA development board. And then they are busy on stand on stand standardized the firmware uh, spec, and like SB, uh, SM, SM BIOS and CIM, uh, this uh, very critical, very important uh, specification for firmware. Right now, they already upstream and upstream all this, all this necessary spec. Then they are they already post V3 patch, patch set of for reviewed. Uh, HP engineer and other uh, and other EDK2 maintainer are work together to make sh to uh, review these patches right now. So I already tried it on real hardware on uh, Sci-Fi Unleash and the QMU. It works pretty well. So that's a pretty good news. So if in the future, if we have the RISC-V server chip, if we, have, we want the RISC-V PC, this is a very important software running on it. So next, for the next step, we, uh, we are working together to, uh, on UEFI spec and platform initialization spec. And more, most importantly, we're gonna do ACPI table on RISC-V. We're also uh, working on a spec on hypervisor, vert, vert and uh, packed uh, S, I, I, S synced. So uh, actually our goal as uh, Red Hat is an uh, enterprise software uh, company. So uh, our goal is make a software, uh, make a server and PC boring. So for x86, we only have two vendors, so it's not a big problem, right? For ARM, we have uh, thousands, uh, hundreds of uh, chip vendors, so we need SBSA, SBBR, ACS to, to make uh, ARM server-ready uh, validation, validation to make sure everything is uh, under this spec. And we, 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 right now, we are making this ARM server boring. But what what we can do for RISC-V? Uh, in the future, maybe we can ha we will have a lot of different RISC-V chips. So what we can do? So I think we should learn from ARM. We, we should learn from ARM server. We we need to have uh, the same things SB, the same things like SBSA, SBBR, ACS for RISC-V. In the in the inbound system side, we also need some uh, spec like EBBR, like EBBR of ARM. So we need all kind of this spec, and as a, in a inside Red Hat, and we are, we are working on it, and we try to make this happen in the coming years. Okay, thank you very much. Thanks to all the guys who helped me. Thank you. <laughs>